gang of the hill Pockets blue bill Purple bill frank You can get killed Hop in the coop Taking your loot Fucking your bitch I take a two King of the hill I'm just too real Play with bill frank I walk around with that steel King of the hill Pockets blue bill I'm with, you know, what's up, man? <laughs> what up with it, bro? How you doing? I'm good, just cool. Chilling, chilling, you it's know. Chilling. You know, I'll, I'll allow you to introduce yourself, man, you know. All right, my name is Janai. Uh, I'm an artist, uh, a producer. I, I do it all. <laughs> but um, most, most for the most part, I just make music. You know what I'm saying? Trying to get that out there. And this is a young nigga trying to make it for real. <laughs> <laughs> where are you, we gonna start from the beginning, man. Like, where are you from, you know? I'm from Mobile, Alabama. Mm. Uh, I don't got no specific area that I'm really from or claim or anything like that. I just, I'm not with, like, you know where people be like, oh, I'm from this block, 1600. I'm just like, just, in the house in Mobile, Alabama. Like, yeah. It's <laughs> ain't, ain't nothing wrong with that, though. Yeah. What, exactly. What's a uh, describe Alabama to, you know, a Texan or somebody want to know? What is Mobile um, really like? Mobile is basically just a born trouble city. I mean, you have your fun if you got the right squad of people, but it's really not much to do. Like, our mall suck. It's not no amusement parks. It ain't nothing like no real big arcades, anything like that. You gotta go like to surrounding cities. But Mobile is just, it's really everyday people, small mind mentality type thing. But it's beautiful, like, you know, I had good times and bad times. Just, just regular small town city. Everybody know everybody. It's, you know. Okay, okay. Yeah. Like, I every time, you know, I hear of, of rappers, you know, like, where do you where do you tell people you get your style from? Like where how, where do you get your style from? The music you listen to. Um, to be honest, like when it comes to rappers, I wouldn't even say that I'm um, like I, I'm inspired by a few rappers like Pharrell Williams, Tyler the Creator, uh, even like old school like Eric B. Rakim, um, a tribe called Quiz with Q-Tip, like. Like those type of artists, MF Doom, I can just go on all day. But what really inspires me is um, really when I'm producing and just the music that I hear when I'm sampling. So it'll be like your Gladys Knights, your uh, uh, Mini Ripper, Ripperton, uh, Stevie Wonder, like all those artists, like real soulful R&B artists. Um, that's what really inspires me because I listen to a lot of 70s R&B mm. funk on the daily. I really don't vibe out or to rap that often. Who gave you, like, how, where do you get that old school feel from? Like, the samples and stuff. Where, where, did, where did that derive from? Um, It's just basically just me always being open to music. Like, uh, the family that I was around like when I'm around my family, it's a big music household. So it's constantly hear music at parties, hear music, all this and that. But I kind of just always had a true passion for it. So just like how people research, um, like making YouTube videos, uh, how to do anything that they're into. I was just researching the history of music. So it basically just came from myself and me wanting to start collecting vinyls and stuff like that. So me going to the record stores, just picking up like 10 random uh, albums from artists I don't even know. And then I just go sit down, listen to them. So just me being a music nerd, a geek to everything, like any genre, like I just close my eyes and pick up records and be like, okay, I'm about to take these home. And I start to become fans of whatever. So it was just a, just the true love for music mm. really got me into the style that I'm. Who do you, who do you want to work with in the future? Who would I want to work? Really anybody, but it'll be dope to work with like for real, really Tyler. Um, 
and some of the old, like I feel like I, I'll make some dope stuff with Griselda mm -hmm. or like um, Pusha T like I just meet really anybody like when I listen to these people album when they release some I always be feeling like, yeah, I could top that. Or with that beat, yeah, I can probably do something better with that sample flow if they ain't flip it right. So, there's really anybody that's open-minded. But, mm -hmm. um, anyway, I'm, whoever wanna work. <laughs> you ever, ever fallen into battle rap? Fall into battle, uh, battle rap. I mean, I used to watch it on YouTube. I'm really not like a, I'm more of a skillful, like when I'm freestyling me and re-rapping with my friends, I'm more of like a skillful rapper, like trying to come up with different syllables and flows instead of like being aggressive and getting onto an opponent. Like mm -hmm. you don't be rapping against each other, mm -hmm. you be rapping with each other. So, I mean, I've tried, but we mostly like joke about it, like make it a meme, like we just all be joking, like, you know how they be, <laughs> your head big and and they be all taking pauses and stuff like that so we just be playing around with that but yeah. i never took it serious it's always just been something funny to me what kind of kid were you in high school like who like who who who, who inspired your style growing up growing up tyler the creator had a real big influence on my style like just the way i dressed uh the music that i was into like that was really who inspired it but i was just a little goofy kid mm. Messing, running around, messing, being ignorant. Like, I was cool, I never really had no problems, but like, I was just a little nerdy kid that was just break down and dance. Break down and dance? Break down and dance in high school. Like, what, I sit there and think about it, like later, I was a little corny, a little weird dude, but we all gotta go through that stage. What What do you mean by dancing? Like, explain the first, the first yeah. moment you had as a kid, just being in school and, you know, I want to know the choice of dance you chose, and I want to know what everybody's reaction was, man. You got to take us through that moment. Man, to be honest, really all my life from elementary to high school, that's just straight. I, it's, it's hella moments that of me just dancing and getting attention. Like, the, the attention was always positive, especially like, the one where I really got a lot of praise is when I did my fifth grade talent show and I danced to Black Eyed Peas. I was break dancing, pop locking and stuff <laughs> like that. Uh, it was boom, boom, pow. And everybody went crazy. Like I was like the most popular kid in the school until like we, everybody was, went to middle school and then I was just regular again. Mm -hmm. And then I would just do random stuff for attention. Like every time I would dance, everybody just like uh, pay attention to it and be like, oh man, that's, that's what's up. Mm -hmm. I was just an attention bug, mm -hmm. basically. So I just do random stuff to just have everybody like laughing or smiling or something like that. Yeah. But as I got older, I grew out of it because it's not that deep. As you got older, it seemed like you was super dedicated, man. What made you lock in and I, and learn how to make beats? How did you learn? How did you even pick up the you know the thought to do it? Well, my father. Uh, ja uh, Jay Glacier, but his name is Jaheen, we got the same name. He be rapping too, he, he got some fine music, but he the main like bug in my ear that kind of made me want to do it because of me always seeing him do it. Then his brother, uh, his name is T-Man, we call him TJ. He be make, he's always made beats, engineer, record his own stuff. So it was just like, it was just in my blood. So when I was in the fifth grade, that's when I got the iPhone and they had GarageBand on there. So I was just making mixtapes on my phone and they still on SoundCloud. Like just, just being, just, I don't know, it was super weird, but you know, you just learning. So I just released like throughout middle school, I was dropping mixtape. And then, um, yeah, it was just like, as uh, time permits, I just was like, it was just super fun. Mm -hmm. Like I it was a true enjoyment creating music and coming up with something. So that's why I was just like, you know what, now I'm getting older. I'm able to, I'm out the, I'm able, I'm old enough to talk about mature topics. Cause when you starting so long, you really can't, you gotta watch your mouth type thing. But now that I'm old enough to really say what I wanna say, it's like, now I can take it more serious. Mm -hmm. Instead of trying to kid and play route, which they were cool, you know what I'm saying? But 
Instead of just trying to be, I can finally speak my piece and speak my mind on the track instead of trying to like, okay, my mom may hear this, so let me just go ahead and, you know, so I can be fully creative. And it just, it just got more exciting as I got older. Mm -hmm. How were the hardships like, you know, going through like trying to figure out how to make the beat? Uh, hardships is really like the main hardship that I had to go through in through my journey was when it, it's, it's been two, like twice when I had to switch over everything over right so I moved from my mom's house and I was making all my music on the main computer of the house and when I left I didn't take the computer so it was kind of like that stage period was really just like I was in a dark space at the same time too and I was just like I'm moving with my dad so it's a whole change it's something new so I was kind of lost and it's like okay I don't have a computer I don't have anything and then my aunt she looked out for me yo Jonesy she uh make music to the greatest performer ever but um she came through and was like I got this laptop I really don't use it you know, you can have it so you can make your stuff, you know? Mm -hmm. And um, so when I got that, it was kind of like I was lazy. I got lazy because I was just sitting with the computer. It was like, I don't have none of my programs, none of my sounds, none of that. Okay. And then I was just like, how am I going to get it? But me just being the person I am, I started to think, look at old emails where I got the receipt or the link to download everything. <laughs> so it just gradually came, you know, and then it was a process in itself. So I was like being super lazy. Even with my, when I got my newer computer and you got to switch everything over, you get lazy. Just really the switching over part. That's where it'd be like, uh, do I want to do this? But once everything be back in line, the workflow is just great. Mm -hmm. When everything got back in motion, you know, what made you, you know, just go so hard on the cover art? You know? On the cover art? Well, I've always been artistic when it came to covers because the main thing you're going to look at before you look at a project is the cover. Mm -hmm. So it just got to be hard and out of this world. Because me just being a fan of vinyls, like I just always been interested in the artwork. Like the main thing that made me get the album, even though I don't know what to expect, the album could be garbage. But if the cover fire, I'm gonna pick it up. Mm -hmm. You know, so as time permits, I have different ideas. Like I, everything I was just always doing my phone. So I was just like, I just have to be having these visions. Like I visualize things. Like people listen to music, I visualize the music. Like when I'm listening, I see everything. When I'm making the beat, I visualize what the beat sound like. Oh, you know, this sound like a walking apart. Mm -hmm. Or when I'm making a song, it may even, like I see everything. So just the cover just gotta be out of this world mm -hmm. to the limitations of what I can do type thing. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's, it's, that's a big deal. Mm -hmm. It has to make sense. You got to talk about the projects you're putting out, man. You've been super consistent. You know, talk about your beat making and, you know, your rapping ability, man. Uh, well, my first love is really, hold on. My first love is really like producing. Like, that's where I started at. Well, I wouldn't say that. I always used to rap throughout elementary school. Since I was a child, I was always rap. But... Once I started making beats, I really like went down the rabbit hole of doing that and um, not really worried about my bars, right? So really, I just like make the beat, the beat be fire, and be like, oh, it's time to rap. So I'm more of a freestyler. So um, I just be like, just going on and on and on and on and on and on and on. And then it just be like, okay, the song is cool, put it out. But I really put my time and dedication in the production of the record because that's like my first love, like the process, like this is super fun, you know, and I tend to like, I don't know, I'm just able to be fully creative when it comes to making a track mm -hmm. because when I have to write and rap, it's like I gotta 
like um really think about it because i'll be trying to say something that's never been said before because everything has been said like i'm trying to say something and come up with something that you know is different that mm -hmm. gives people like a reason to want to listen to it mm -hmm. so but with my projects like i dropped my first project on a uh, streaming platform because in it i always drop little goofy projects in middle school and like early in high school like little funny tracks because i used to just be making stuff but um i kind of stopped doing that like when i got in my sophomore year i kind of stopped putting out stuff because it was like I don't want to just be sitting here like playing mm -hmm. because in high school I used to just make goofy songs and like change them into artist names and then uh, like airdrop it to everybody in like the cafeteria or something like that so they think they get like a uh, unreleased NBA Youngboy song but it's really me being ignorant you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying so I just be like I, I thought that was funny and then people started to actually know me for making that stupid music Mm -hmm. So then when I would try to be serious, they really weren't messing with me. I was like, all right, I need to take it back, step back, figure out my sound, figure out a way to up my production so it can be taken serious. So after a while, I was just experimenting with different things. And then I finally came up with the concept of cooking up while watching movies for the first one, which um, I would just be sitting at, like it was summertime when I made it. I would just be sitting at the crib um just watching tv like i'll watch friday or anything like that and then i'll just go and make the beat and then it's just like oh it'll be cool if i just add this clip like this real funny clip from the movie and put it in there and it was just like that's what i was doing cooking up beats while i was watching movies mm -hmm. so it was just like that'll be a dope concept kind of like made you feel like you be in the movie of some sort, you know what I'm saying? And then when it came around time for the second one, I was like, oh, it's the one year anniversary of the first one, so I gotta drop some. And then I just wanted it to be different because I've always wanted to make a kind of DJ Khaled project with artists from my city to, you know, rap over my beats and then we all put it out. But just based off my style and what's going on in my city, a lot of people really weren't messing with what I had going on. Mm -hmm. You know, I was always, just, even just coming up, like when I was making my other stuff, like my goofy stuff, I was always seen as weird when it came to my music. So it was just like, it was a blessing to get the few features, even though they was family, like my dad was on there. And then I had some vocals from my sister Treasure, when she sung on one of my songs, like, I think it was like 2018. And then I luckily from that old computer, I had just sent her raw vocals to my phone. I, so I was able to sample that and made a little song out of that. And then I finally built up the courage to just go ahead. Let me, let me see how it'll be if I just go on and just drop a rap record and rap on one of my beats and just go ahead and put it out. So OG shit, that was like one of my first rap tracks in a long time. So I put that out. And I'm the type, when I drop music, I really don't be liking it. But when I get other people's reactions, it's kind of like, I hop on the bandwagon. But like, okay, it's actually cool. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, when I dropped OG shit, I was kind of nervous. Like, when I dropped Cooking Up While Watching Movies 2, I was actually, like, super nervous because it was different. It wasn't as um, cohesive to the first one. Like, really, my main purpose with the second one is just to show my talent try to put that current twist on it, not be too different, but still stay in my pocket, but also be in the pocket of others. So when they listen to it, then they'll be like, bro, your beat's dope, well, let's work. Mm. But the beats wasn't the thing that pop. OG shit did. Mm. So it's like, ain't nobody fucking with my main purpose, my main goal, which is the beats. Niggas want me to rap. So it's like, now I gotta be a rapper. And it's just like, it's fun, don't get me wrong, but I'm, that's still a learning process in itself. Every day I write, 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 just so I can just up my skill. Cause it's like, I was rapping all the time, like when I was younger, when I started making beats, I fell down that rapping hole, I mean that rabbit hole. So it's like rap just was kind of out of the picture. Cause I was just so busy trying to better my production. 
And I was like, okay, I'm gonna have to rap and just be a rapper. Like, because if people vibing with that, I get more views with me showing my face and actually speaking on the track, then I'll do it. So it wasn't like I was forced to do it, but it was just like, like I wanted to do it. But at the same time, it was like, I was glad I was getting a good reaction from it. So I was like, people was actually like, I didn't know how to rap. And that's what I've been wanting them to do the whole time. But it took me like being kind of serious with it to do it. So then after that, like I just been dropping singles like every couple of months, which I need to do better on my consistency. But it's just like every couple of months just to keep my name, drop a video here and there, boom. And it's just like, yeah. Rap. <laughs> do you do you direct your own videos too? Uh, you try to. When you be dealing with different videographers, they also have their vision too, and sometimes they can be kind of like not stuck up, but just like in their own air zone to where it's like if you have an opinion, they be like, oh man, it's all good. Like my first music video, OG shit. For that music video, that's my least favorite video I have. Why? Because it's just not what I vision. The people, when like the people that came over that's in the video, like I had a whole concept for it. It was supposed to be like my dad. He was like going off. He was like, "Don't have like you know what I'm saying like don't have no parties in my house scenario," mm -hmm. and we had the pool, and it was like we gonna have a party like a pool party while my folks are gone but when i told the guy i ain't gonna say the name they cool people but it's just like you know they work that they work just how they work just whack you know what i'm saying i appreciate them for giving me the time of day but still it's just it's not the workflow is horrible <laughs> so the people that was in my video they did not get in the pool until after because the guy was like my camera dead and I was like, oh, we can shoot some more stuff. Oh, my camera dead, bro. I got that. That's it. We, we gonna be good. I'm like, we gonna be good? Uh, you didn't even give me the shots that I really wanted. Like, hold up. They not even in the pool yet. And I was like, yo, y'all get in the pool while I'm shooting the music video. Because at the end, I was supposed to be getting in there and then it was supposed to be a whole concept. But it's like some videographers just be doing it strictly for the check. So they don't be wanting to do nothing creative Because when I hit them with my idea It's like, man I'm going to have to throw an extra 200 on on top of it For a storyline I'm like, are you going to make me pay $500 for a music video? And all you got to do is just have us talking Just for a little bit It's literally me telling my dad goodbye And then the people coming in And then us running out So it was just like The whole video had a beautiful concept to it but it wasn't executed. That's why, like, I would reshoot, just like delete that video and do another one. But it's kind of like I'm past that now. It's time to move to the other things. Um, the one I did do myself was Glow. I fully did that one by myself. Me and my homies, uh, Anthony, uh, Ty was there. My cousin was there, and Antoine, which was like one of my camera. Like we try to put a group together, um, VBM, where it was like it's us producers. You got niggas that's just cool that know people, so they'll be able to turn up. Two artists like me and my cousin uh, Suave Tian will be rapping, and then we had a camera guy to take our pictures and shoot the videos. But you know, people don't have the same drive as you, and also we be busy. And on top of that, I ended up leaving and coming out to Texas. So it most definitely fell to shambles, but all my boys, they doing what they supposed to do. Like Antoine, he really be doing this thing with the camera now, and I'm proud of him, you know. But um, now, like then, he filmed it, and it was just really us just being ignorant downtown, walking around, I'm just rapping. Like That was like the fun, because we both, like when, you shooting a video and it, one person don't just see it as business, like both people see it as fun, that's when you turn out. That's like one of my favorite videos that I have um, because it was just, it was just us, just being us. Then I, then I did uh, 90, oh, hold up. I did another video that I deleted 
this uh, it, I didn't like it. But uh, I wait, wait, it. wait. You you like shot the whole video, put it together, and then deleted it. I shot it? the whole video, put it together, and deleted it. Why? Because it's that iMovie stuff, you know what I'm saying? And you be on iMovie, and it's just, it ain't come out how I wanted to. Then I stopped liking the song too. And it wasn't on May, it wasn't on stream. It was just like some little side project that I just put out just to be in everybody's face. Some people liked it, but it was just like me, I stopped liking it. Cause I really didn't know, like the outfit I had on. <laughs> That's the main reason. I was like, man, what you got going on? Man, what, what's your favorite, you know, what's your favorite shoe to wear? My favorite shoe, I will always be seen in some Chuck 70s Converse, black. Or I may wear, I got fancy a little bit and got the Como de Garcon, but I got the, just like strictly L and I got all uh, the Rap Simon collab. Like really if they got a fire collab, I'll cop them. But for the most part, I just, I used to be into the colors, the pink shoes, the green shoes, the burgundy shoes. But it's like, I just get the black one and go with everything, it's simple. Like I was, I, that's like really the main shoe that I wear or forces. I've never been like a sneakerhead like that. I just was like, I like shoes that cost the same every time. <laughs> they don't go up, you know what I'm saying? Like the other ones, but I want to step my shoe game up. You know what I'm saying? You just be having to find them. Like they be taxing for sneakers. And then on top of that, everything sold out. I, I haven't won not one raffle. And then you'll lose a raffle to somebody that's super tacky, bro. <laughs> like, they put a damn dinosaur shirt on with the fucking space grays. Yeah. Like, that's what you, that's the fit you was going to put together with them. Yeah, dude looked like Ricky Martin. He yeah, got on, uh, he got on, uh, what, uh, 501 skinny jeans. Tripping. And it just be like, I just gave up on the sneaker game. I was just like, man, I'm just gonna wear chucks. I ain't trying to impress nobody. Yeah. I still be fresh at them. Yeah. I, I feel like, man, like, to be honest, I feel like in my city, I really like put a lot of people on stuff, mm -hmm. even though some don't want to admit it. Cause in middle school, really, yeah, in middle school, really feel like when I came back, cause I used to stay in Mississippi before then, like we was in Mobile to Mississippi. Then we came back to Mobile my fifth grade year. When I came back, I had hit them with the Vans. Like, I was just wearing Vans, like, really throughout my whole sophomore year. That's when I started getting into Chucks. Mm -hmm. But Vans, that's like my whole middle school, straight Vans. Um, Vans, Vans, Vans. There's all types of Vans. And I feel like I inspired, like, wasn't nobody wearing Vans until I was showed up to the school with my Vans on. And then now everybody's wearing Vans. You see a lot of people wearing Vans. And then even with the Chucks, no, nah, I used to wear the, uh, the One Stars. I ain't, they ain't want nobody else rocking them. But when I started wearing Converse more, like you start seeing a lot, a lot of more people wear Converse. It was and Taylor then, Gang though. I know it, but like the kind that I wear, everybody would have the All Stars, mm -hmm. but people started to wear the Chuck 70s, which is like a thicker, better made, more comfortable more durable Converse. Mm -hmm. And then you got these super tacky uh, Converse boots. I'm so tired of seeing them girls wear them. <laughs> That's like they number one shoe right now. You just be like, man. Would you ever wear like the uh, those platform um, designer shoes? Oh, uh, I don't know. <laughs> I ain't even gonna, no. Uh, the Alexander McQueen boot, those are all right. Um, the rap, the refs, I think. Those are refs in it. Those look Converse looking shoes, those are cool. But like Balenciaga, like I went and tried the shoe on. I I can't I can't I can't do it. Like they just be super big, and it just be like man, my feet not even that big, bro. But they look nice on pictures. But just wearing them, like seeing them on your feet, like I went to go try them on, seeing them on your feet. Just like I'm just put them back. <laughs> I don't like little bulky shoes. What, what's your pet peeve, man? Just with people in general. Oh, I got a lot of pet peeves. I don't like dirty nails. I don't like dry lips. Uh, I hate Wait, life. wait, wait, man. You talking about women? No, I'm talking about people in general. You don't like other guys' dry lips? Like, just when you got the skin and the crust, like, it just looks so dirty, you know what I'm saying? Like, the skin falling off, your lip bleeding. 
That's disgusting. <laughs> um, people that get real close when they talk to me, and like with the spit, like when you be at the cl- when you be at the club and stuff, you just got their arm around you, talking all out. Yeah, man, the whole ear wet. You like, ah, damn, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like, I hate the loud people. I just. I just like chill, you know what I'm saying, vibes. That's why, like, when I used to go to parties, I used to be so annoyed because I'd be like, I'm ready to go. Yeah. But, like, yeah, and somebody that's, like, just not. I, my biggest pet peeve is somebody that's doing something based off others. Like, they're not fully. They, I don't like people that's not fully they self. Because nah. you can tell when somebody faking something. Mm-hmm. Like, me being the type of person I am, People try to be into the things or like just to be able to have a conversation with me, they try to be into the same thing that I'm into. I'll be like, yo, like, I did, I'm like, cuz, you know damn well you don't listen <laughs> to Nirvana. Like, you don't have to sit here and lie, bro. Like, just be yourself, you know what I'm saying? Especially when it comes to the music. It's like, don't nobody want to experiment and like really just make some... Or really just make some stuff like that that's different. Mm-hmm. Like they like, okay, we just gonna hop on the same NBA young boy boat. Mm-hmm. Like, cuz you ain't never shot nobody a day in your life. <laughs> Why are you sitting here talking about you slime and you sliding on niggas? Like just be yourself. Like instead of like cause me, I've never been in the streets, like I've seen it. Like I've been around, been at parties that didn't got shut up, like been the different places, like, but I've never been into that. Like I've never wanted to be on no type of time, no gangster, nothing like that. Like I don't like looking over my shoulder. Mm-hmm. And then it's like, also when it came to my music, it's like people gonna try you to see if you actually about what you talk about. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, man, I'm just finna rap about female, uh, what I <laughs> what I go through on the daily, you know what I'm saying, and being fresh, cause mm-hmm. and like my like, cause I'm not I'm not trying to have no beef, no nothing. Like I'm just be chilling, you know yeah. what I'm saying. Like, that's why I always mess with, like, Wiz Khalifa and Currency, because they really want on that type of time. They just be, just be rapping about weed. <laughs> <laughs> and chilling, eating and snacks. Chilling. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so you don't got to do the most, man. Like, just be yourself, bro, and do what you want to do. Yeah. And they going to do that. Yeah, exactly. Every time. But think about it this way. How did you get out of that situation when you were at the house, though? When I was at the who? When you were at the house parties. Oh, when I was at the house parties? That party? were getting shot up, because... Man, you got That was happening to a lot of these kids. I didn't even... I was like, why are y'all so angry? Who it was, was even out, like, out here. That's what, like when I experienced that shit. Mm-hmm. So, because usually, like, before, like, in Mo, like, back at home, I really ain't go nowhere. Uh, I was one of those kids that was kind of scared to ask type of thing. <laughs> so I probably could have went, but I never did. And then when I found out I didn't go, it was like, oh man, they got shot up, they shot up the party. And really when I came, like when I came out here, like that's when I started, like when I don't have, be off, I'd be like going to these, like, like me and these chicks and we were going to these random people's house and it'd be problems. Mm-hmm. So that's why I like, just by knowing that I've always been a, a wall hugger. Mm-hmm. I find me a spot post up to where I can see everything and it be by the door Mm -hmm. because when they get the trip in you got to get up out of there Mm -hmm. like I ain't I'm not finna run I'm not finna do the most I don't even guess I don't panic I just be like I knew it was gonna happen it's like when you expect it you can just go and get up out of there Mm -hmm. it don't be nothing too major I just always stand I'm not the life of the party gotta be in the middle of everything I'm like man I'm posted up like just chilling so you know, and crazy thing is, you used to be in the mix dancing. <laughs> yeah, high school, you know what I'm saying? Get up in there, do the worm um, <laughs> on the damn soul train. You doing the worm? Yeah, bro, tripping, just straight tripping. <laughs> but really, like when COVID shut everything down, that's when I did like a self evaluation and started to like up my mindset, like to change the way, the whole way I think and just the whole way I act to different situations is just in life in general. Mm -hmm. So that's why I think when I came out here, I was just so good with doing, being on my own because I kind of mentally prepared myself for that. Cause you know, some people still be mama's boy and and daddy's girl and just be like on some little kid stuff. But I just realized like really my junior year, like man, it's time for me to, 
switch up everything. Mm. And then at the same time, you ain't get no hoes from acting all goofy, man. <laughs> when you start chilling, they, they start coming around more. So that's what, I, I, they even got more chiller when I realized that. Just be like sitting there, you know what I'm saying? Minding my business. I don't be like, hey, what's up? Uh, you cute, yo. Put my number in your phone. <laughs> Hell no, nah, I just be chilling, man. So hey, man, cat calling days was, you know, you can't do that anymore. Nah, man. The Me Too movement. You can't. Everybody think you if you just be too hard. If they don't know that you like playing. They gonna think that you sexually harassing them. No, you can't do that anymore, though. You can't at all, period. You know, how do you feel about, like, we don't have freedom of speech anymore? Man, that literally sucks. I was just talking to somebody about that the other day. Like, you can't say anything, and it's like, dang, I'm sitting here dropping stuff. <laughs> and it's like comedians, like, nobody's funny for real. Because you gotta watch what you say. Mm-hmm. Like, that's why I always go back to the Bernie Mac comedy, like, Cat Williams, like, all they old stuff. Because mm-hmm. you can't do nothing. But, like, I just feel like everybody's just really sensitive. Because mm-hmm. it's not that deep. Because I've seen racist stuff um, all the time. And, like, I've been called a different name, weird, annoying all that but i've never cared you know what i'm saying like i feel like just unless people back up their words the words really don't matter bro because mm-hmm. you telling me something that i already know the reason that people are so sensitive is because they're insecure about their flaws and that time through COVID, i fully accepted myself and if people can tell me anything they can talk real down on me mm-hmm. i'm like i know or that's not true or that's your perception mm-hmm. i just don't care i feel like when people just stop caring everything will be all right and on top of that that's well really if they stop caring because if you got something to say about it just keep it to yourself mm-hmm. type of thing like okay uh well jokes are jokes you know what i'm saying but I feel like it's a different, like, when you're getting paid to be funny, comedians are really here to make the bad situations funny. So, it's a way to do it in a tasteful manner, but to the, it's to the point where you can't even, you sneeze wrong, you cancel. Like, I don't know, I just keep things to myself. Mm-hmm. Like, I never speak on nothing or anything like that. Any topic when it comes to being homophobic or anything like that, yeah like because it's best because even if you're not homophobic or anything like that you just say the wrong thing now they offended but i feel like if you if you if you have a lifestyle or anything that you're into even when it comes to racism if you fully accept yourself and love yourself like you're not gonna get mad like at all like white people be doing stuff all the time you think i sit there and be be about to argue with them (laughs) Like, I can't believe you just said that all oh, right. No, I don't care. Cause you calling, you you saying something, racist or doing something in a distasteful manner just because you don't like the color of my skin it has nothing to do with me. You gonna go home at, I'm still living my life doing my thing. I'm not gonna have to worry about you. So I just feel like you just be blowing stuff up because you, why are you offended by something that's very temporary? Mm-hmm. Like, you're gonna be all right to, when you go to sleep and wake up. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And that problem, whoever did something to you or said something about you, like, you're not gonna have to see them again. I mm-hmm. mean, unless you're in school with them, but you can avoid that, you know? Mm-hmm. That's why, I'm like, when people said something to me in school or about me or heard something about me, I just was like, okay. Like, what I'm gonna do? Like, get mad because you said something about me that's not true? Mm-hmm. Like, and if you know me, you know whatever they're talking about ain't nothing real. Which I really ain't had no situations like that. But this is an example. Like, it's like, man, it's like, hey, weird. I'm like, nigga, no. I know I'm weird. Cut the fuck. Yeah. So, I just. Some I people just reach their care. peak in high school, though. A lot of people reach their peak, and I'm starting to see that. Mm-hmm. Like, the, all the cool kids 
really, all the cool kids in high school that was popular that had all the hoes, they like drug addicts now. <sighs> Lean perps, smoking weed every day, not doing shit. And it's like, I'm 18, got my own spot, just bought my own car, working. Uh, and in a whole another city at that. Not staying with my folks. And it's like, it's like you can tell, and I'm starting to see that, even with the females, like the females that was just super bad, and they never give me a chance. They want me now, but it's like, ugh, <laughs> the fuck? Like, ugh, no ma'am. Well, what was your first encounter with them, you know, after, you know, you've been, you've been, you know, reforming yourself, you know, and progressing? What was that first encounter like My when you came encounter. back to Mobile? Really, it was just so much love. Like, everybody wanted to hang with me. It's just like, could. Like, it was like chicks that I always, like, I was a little simp, thirsty ass nigga <laughs> in, when I was in school. But <laughs> I was you a simp, bro. Man. <laughs> man, like, the way, I tell you, like, life just, like, make you be the way you are. Like, I never, I don't celebrate Valentine's Day or none of that because like in middle school, I bought a girl something for Valentine's Day and she ran away from me. <laughs> Cause we was, in the, we, was at, we was in the PE, so everybody seen that bro. And I was like, dang, but. Did you cold? Did me super cold. But I was just like, I was just like, now I'm at a point where you gotta be able to offer me something. Like, it got to bring some kind of substance into my life. Like, you, I used to like you a lot, but it's like, you really don't got nothing going on. Mm -hmm. But, you know, you still take them down through there, you know what I'm saying? But everybody got their first yeah. heartbreak, man. Yeah, for real, but yeah. you still like, it's still like, even like when they rejected me then and now they starting to like me. You know, Muscle, Muscle Matthew, the dude that been lifting them weights and all that, you know? Getting swole, he, he they gotta take him sometimes. You know what I mean? Yeah. What's your first heartbreak like, man? Uh, first heartbreak. Dude named Steve. He had a he had a car. He was 21. They used to come by the high school and all that. <laughs> Dang. Um. They would come by and try to sweep all the high schoolers up. I was like, bro, I'll never be like that. I don't know why they doing oh, nah, that. Oh no, but they tripping. <laughs> and they be like old as hell. But my first heartbreak was really like, I think it was kind of recent. Because I ain't like, usually I don't care. Like all the girlfriends, like, like well, fifth grade, that happened, but that really don't count. But like with the mentality, cause I was starting to better myself. You know what I'm saying? Like when I moved with my dad, I was like on top of, like I was researching different things. Like I was watching a lot of like videos about you know, self-confidence and like how to deal with females on the uh, alpha note, yeah. which I just you chew the, uh, take the meat from the bones and spit the bones out. Like <laughs> I, I associate with some of that, but sometimes they really be tripping on there. Yeah. But uh, I was just starting to like get myself. So I thought I had it all down pat. So um, <laughs> you rehearsed this shit. Yeah, I was like, yeah, I'm good. I'm good. Ain't nobody finna trick me, but. It was just one chick, um, it was around the time, it was my senior year, no. I was about to, or did I already graduate? Yeah, I already graduated. And then um, I started talking to this uh, girl. She was a freshman in college, but she did it online. Mm -hmm. And then um, I was like, I was like, yeah, she was cool. I really like started messing with her because I liked the way she dressed. So. I was like, we was kicking it. Like I met her at the movies and stuff like that. And it was cool in the movie theater, but like when we sat in the car, like her conversation, just her, her whole vibe was just like, <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm saying? So I knew I kind of, I really liked it. Cause like after that first night, I'm going up the stairs into my room, all happy and jittery. Like, you know what I'm saying? So then we just be super cool. Like everything was cool. Like she'll do a lot for me. Like bring me lunch on my lunch break, eat with me or during my lunch break. You know, we'll go little places. But um, she felt like I wasn't doing enough. And I tend to get that a lot because I be busy and be focusing on so much other things. I never take the time out to think about 
oh, we haven't went out in, in a while. Like, we need to do something. Or I don't be thinking about that because I just be going through the process of life. And, it's, and like, they start, like, at a certain point when I guess when they realize, like, oh, uh, I. I didn't get no flowers. I didn't, never got any chocolate, no teddy bear, and I'm doing all da 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 da. They start acting different. So then she ended up going to college. You, you know how that go. Hello, cut them off. <laughs> you got to get her. Hey, hey. <laughs> then I, um, I, I moved out here too. So then it was like. She talking to Puerto Rican Paul and yeah, maybe and, uh, I, I ain't know, the type of nigga that ass though. You know the, the I just you the know right the, outside linebacker for uh, Paul Quinn. Exactly, yeah, <laughs> cause I know what I'm doing. Even though I'm not in college, you know what I'm saying. I know what I be having going on, so I yeah. know. You know what I'm saying. So it's like, and then I came out here, so it was like, man, it's like useless. But we'll still we still would talk every day and stuff like that. But then you start getting like. Uh, some days she not calling, mm. or she hang up. You be in the you be like she like hang up real fast. Be like I'll call you back. Don't call back. So then your brain just gets to overthinking. Cause I actually really. Cause usually I don't be tripping, but it's like when you actually like somebody, you get to be like, hold up, wait a minute. No, 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 no. Let me see what she got going on. So then I realized like with that. Well, no, that's not it. Thanksgiving came around. I went back home, super happy to be like ready to see you. Like I'm like, man, we from uh, you know what I'm saying? Hello. Super happy, <laughs> man. You go out uh, when it's seen her, dry. So you know what that means. Shit, it's, uh, it's, you got something else going on, mm. or. And then like, I would like go, like get out the car, jump out the car. She'd be on the phone, I open the door. And it's like, yeah, I ain't say nothing, but I was like, okay, yeah, it's over. So you then open I just, the door and what happened? Yeah, I opened the door and she just put the phone down. Like she was on the phone while I was out. Uh, Come back, she put the phone down. Uh, and I never, like, she was never my girlfriend. It was like, I liked her like that. Yeah. And then it was just like, you know what? Uh, it's so with Cause then I started to feel like I was forcing it, like I'm doing too much. Like now it's kinda like it's kinda like oh, I don't I don't want this to be over with. So let me but then it was just like, you know what, hold up. Let me cause put, put all the shit in my brain that I learned and apply that. So once I applied that, it started distancing myself. We actually stopped talking for a good little while. But we just recently started back talking, but it's just more on the couch. Like, I don't even yeah. like her like that. It's because you gave her some space. Yeah, I gave her some space, and I got myself some space. Yeah. So it's like, nah, we just we just cool. Like, we chilling. If I if I come back home and see you, we gonna hang. But if not, fuck it, you know? But we just still cool. Because mm. I got what I got going on out here, so it's not no problem. But just based with that whole situation, that kind of just made me like, not cold hearted, but I just don't be letting nobody in. Mm -hmm. Like, I just kind of like keep it super casual. Like, don't even be at the crib for too long. Like, just super casual. Like, mm -hmm. I'm not trying to cuff you or nothing like that. I ain't even trying to do all that. Like, I don't even want to see you every day. Like, don't try to see me every day. Like, just super casual, man. It's never really your time enough. Yeah. The cuff kind of just creep up on you. Yeah, for real, for real. It happens like that, man. You know what I mean? But, you know, how old are you now, you know, for the people who don't know? 18. <laughs> I'm super, I'm young as hell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you 18, yeah. and you got, you know, your own spot, you know, you out here handling your business. Yeah, and that's why, you know what I'm saying, I can get away with telling somebody I'm 21. Yeah. So that probably just fucked everything up. <laughs> <laughs> Are we going to try to edit that out? Yeah, we're going to try plan. to edit that. got to keep that, man. <laughs> but at the same time, how did, you know, how was the transition from Alabama to Texas? The transition to be under like that first, I came in September. So really by that first September, October, I was lost. Like I was just like clueless to what I was finna do. I'm like, how am I gonna get to know people? I'm like pressing my friends, like calling them like, yo, what's up, what y'all got going on? Like still trying to be in the mix. But then it's kind of like when I got my, my, when I got my apartment in November, I was like, yo, 
Yeah, okay. I can get the hang of this. Mm. And then you start, I started just branching out more. Like I'm right down the street from the college. Mm. So I started going to these places, talking to different chicks to see like, what's what's the party? Where mm. where, where the party at? Like, where, where we going this weekend? What mm. we doing Friday night? We go out to the party, I meet people, network, and it started to get easy. Mm. So it's just like, now I got my own friendships out here. Like, even if I would have went back home, uh, back to Mobile, I, I always have a reason to fly to see the people that I met out here. Mm-hmm. And then, um, really just my coworkers too, like me going to work and they always joking and laughing. Like once I started to get comfortable with them, it made it easy to be out here too. Cause when, like when you first come to a new area, you like, you like a, a, a newborn uh, deer. <laughs> you can't even walk around like straight, you know what I'm saying? Like, I ain't know where I was, I'm sitting here like looking at people, like, what, 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 like, where my squad at? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? No squad, so you just out here by yourself type of thing. Well, luckily, I had my uncle too, so he would help, like, we'll hang out, but now it's got to the point where you know, I be doing my own thing. Now, got my car, I'll holler at you, uncle. Yeah. Just like, you know what I'm saying? So, it, it's good. It was fairly easy, but them first two months, like, I was lost and then at the same time i was still trying to like this is myself from old girl mm-hmm. so you know what i'm saying once i once i did that got the hang up i'm just you know how how is it how is your mental health these days man like oh. people don't talk about that enough it's really like so at some point you gotta sit down and reflect and be like i did a good job you know i'm doing a good job yeah but I am to be all over the place to be honest like I don't be depressed I don't never really be sad but I'm tend to be like a overthinker and I tend to stress out a lot like um cuz it'll be instances like you know the current job I'm working it's like that's about to be over cuz it's construction like once you finish with the project it's over mm-hmm. so it's just like what am I going to do next um, how am I gonna top my accomplishments that I made at 18 when I turned 19 in a month? And it's like, what am I? What am I gonna do, like differently, that I did yesterday? And then at the same at the same time, I be feeling like I don't be having a lot of time to accomplish the goals that I want to, because it's like everybody's younger and younger and be popping. So you see your competition, you just be like, dang, what am I doing wrong? I need to do this. I need to do this. So it's just like, I tend to overthink and then like one moment I'll just be super happy. Then next moment I start thinking about the past and what I had going on. Then I start missing people and then just be like, all right, I'm turned again. So it just be over and over again. But most of the time I'm to myself overthinking. Mm-hmm. So that'd be my main thing. I just, until everything be all good. Like once I get my whole situation, like what I'm gonna do after I'm finished with this job, mm-hmm. situated, I'm not gonna have to overthink anymore. That's life though, Yeah. you know? You so, know. really just happiness and stress. They're not stress, stress. Just like a light, like, eh, how am I gonna pay this car note? Like, mm-hmm. what if I don't get hired, or, you know? Mm-hmm. So that's what it be. There's always somebody out there going through some crazier stuff. That's how I think about it. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes you gotta like, think and be like, man, I'm gonna let them, that certain person make it. Right. I'm not gonna have an attitude right now. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I, what, I what's the situation to... where you had to be like, all right, you controlled yourself? A lot. Mm. A lot of situations. Pretty much, I've always, I've never been the type to react emotionally. Like, even when it comes to females, like, I'm not finna yell. I'm not finna, like, get loud with you. But even when it comes to dudes, like, in school, because I sent, like, me growing up being loud, like, it just seems so soft because I sound like a little girl. Like, because my voice is not that deep as it is, but when I get loud, it gets a crack in, and I'll be like, you know what I'm saying? I start the watering, but you're not, like, finna cry. You just be, like, real mad. Yeah, yeah. So I just be like, I sound stupid when I yell. And it just be like, I don't want to hear that. So I just I always learn to just. It's cool out, bro. Like, it ain't. I always look at everything like it ain't that serious. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm trying to go home at the end of the day. Like, I'm not even gonna be thinking about what you just said to me. Um, the next when time. I get home, exactly. So I just be like, okay, 
You know what I'm saying? I ain't gonna let nobody do it. You put my your hands on me. I'm finna, it's finna get crazy. But if you just talking mess, bro, like a lot of times you be at these parties, bro, people be looking at you a certain type of way. You just gotta be like, what are you looking at? And then just keep on minding your business because everything can be avoided because you never know how your opponent gonna react. Mm -hmm. He can probably be in such an emotional state or out of his mind that he just, Start shooting. Yeah. For no reason. Mm -hmm. So now you in the hospital, um, just for no reason. Just you walk because away? somebody just because somebody looked at you funny. <laughs> oh, this nigga stepped on my shoes, now I gotta get no. uh, your walk away game gotta be proper too. Walk away so, game. Sometimes you gotta let people make it. Cause yeah. off the off the certain fact they'll you know, they'll be like they'll crash themselves out. You know. Exactly. Sometimes you just gotta let, you know. And you see it happen. Yeah. Like a lot of the times, like the people who used to be like doing retarded stuff in high school, or like just be saying the most crazy thing, like they life just downhill and I'm up from here. So if I would've just got stooped to their level and got ignorant with them, that wouldn't have accomplished anything at all. So they punishing themselves. What's a moment where somebody tried to peer pressure you and you was like, nah, that ain't right? Um, really anytime, like especially when it comes to alcohol, mm. like everybody just be blowed that I don't drink. Like, uh, like it's just like, that stuff is nasty to me. So it's every time I go to party, Come on, take a shot, take a shot, take a shot, take a shot. And then get all in my face. And then it's like, no, 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 no. I'm pretty strong when it comes to me peer, being peer pressured to do something. Like I'm like in any drug, like I've been around multiple drugs. Like, and it's like, it's be offered to me. And I just look at them and be like, no way. Yeah. <laughs> no way. Yeah. No, I'm good on it's that. It's got a crazy name and they just, yeah. Yeah, this, that new Falifal, I believe. <laughs> and you be like, cuz, you over here, though, like, you had a party, like, you supposed to turn over and interact with people, not be over here like this. <laughs> like, those and I was like, come How on. How do you cause. feel about people, like, you know, popping pills back to back? I got a few homies that's like that. That's the crazy thing about it. And it's kind of like, is gross like you're not finna get no hoes being all doped out <laughs> you know what i'm saying like they think they be the hardest coolest dude and it's just be like bro that's disgusting like you really killing yourself right now zombie right straight zombie like you want to go throughout your day being a zombie i like being alert mm -hmm. so that's why different things like i don't smoke weed often because it makes me like just want to lay down Mm -hmm. Or, you know what I'm saying? So it just be like, I uh, like being in control and like being alert. So I'd be like, okay, let me make sure I do this. I do this, I do this. Like, I like that type of thing. I don't want to be over here like, yeah, dog, you know, uh, da, 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 da. <laughs> Then like, niggas be falling asleep in the studio and stuff like that, cause they be high. And you be like, cause we got a two hour session and you will sleep for an hour and 45 minutes. And now you wanna, now you wanna get on the microphone? Like the hell? Tripping, so I, that's never been something I've been into, drugs. Man. Wait, 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 so they go to sleep in the studio and y'all paid for studio time? Yes, like niggas are literally like just being there high. Huh. And that's like the cool thing. Like it's cool to be a junkie now. Like I'm I'm such an old head when it comes to hip hop. Like I love really everybody. Like all that dope rap. Uh Raekwon, like the Wu Tang stuff, like all that stuff, like Jay Z, like Pusha T, like I like rap where they talking about selling it, putting in that work to get it out in the street. I ain't trying to hear about nobody doing crack and loving it. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> I mean, it's cool, to, but it's just like that druggy route just took a downward spiral. Like, not everybody is actually zombies, even if they not on, on drugs, because the number one drug is this. Mm. And this is really causing people to be zombies. Mm. So... Why do you think that? You just think because it's the internet and then everything yeah. is like... Everything, like... Kids are so awkward. 
mm-hmm. like the younger kids, <laughs> they'd be super awkward. Like with me, I could hold a conversation at three. So like I would be talking somebody head off. Mm-hmm. Kids these days, they start off, start off young, they'd be like five months with a whole tablet. You're like this nigga can't even hold his neck up. <laughs> so it just be like, like the social life is gone. So it's like even when you interact with people, like people be awkward. Yeah. Cause I'll be out, people like I'll be out at these parties and see people with a big social media following. But you wouldn't even think they had a big social media following because they just like. And then you just talk to them about, yeah, hey, hey, what's up? But it's like, nigga, you over here doing backflips and all that extra shit on TikTok, where that energy at now? You know what I'm saying? Like, it's just causing people to be socially awkward and people can't even communicate mm. or have in-person reactions. Mm. I mean, interactions. Because me, I've always been an in-person type of dude. Like, when it comes to females, like, look, I'm not trying to be on the phone all day or texting back and forth all day. Mm. Pull up. Mm-hmm. Let's go to the park. Let's go get something to eat or something. Like, I'm not trying to. I don't like my phone, period. Mm-hmm. So, the phone answer. can be dangerous, though. Super dangerous. Because like, everything's just dangerous. stored in there, man. Oh, yeah. Man, just one slip up, doop, everything out there. <laughs> That's why, I, I mean, shit, if that shit happen, they just gonna have some weak ass music. <laughs> and hella screenshot, uh, screen recorded videos is just weird, funny shit. <laughs> and then like pictures of me. <laughs> Hell no. So it ain't much. I ain't got much to offer on my phone. So find, find my iPhone. Have you ever had a find my iPhone moment Man. where you had to go actually get it? Yes, bro. Like I've had to find find my iPhone moment because like <laughs> somebody get the sw- oh. Sly Cooper in you, swiper no swiping. Yeah, bro. <laughs> this was the time of when like I find my iPhone wasn't even as good as it is now mm-hmm. you know how niggas used to like during PE niggas used to steal shit like niggas <laughs> yeah, used to steal shit. shit man like look look I had a little, a little trap phone I wasn't supposed to have I got my phone to it mm-hmm. no password in my book bag so I'm all changed up you know having a good ass time in PE come back the phone going, I'm not even supposed to have it. I'm like, man, ain't no way. So I'm sitting here like, hey, bro, <laughs> could you find my iPhone on? It's not even connected to my iCloud. So it's like, now nah, somebody just got a free phone, like a straight up free phone. So that's just, that, that's like the real main one. I mean, I had to find my, uh, my AirPods one time. But for the most part, I be fairly responsible. I keep this thing going be like, oh, man, testing. boys are janky. It'll be somebody that like failing all their classes with a hall pass, just walking around, stealing people's stuff every period. Bro, you know, when I tell you, like, <laughs> for, for the remainder of the year, I just wanted to see if somebody pulled out a, a, a white iPhone 5. So I was just sitting there looking like hey, everybody device, like, nobody did. Nah. They, they was smooth with it, man. God, damn. Middle school was something else, bro. Everybody be changing. That's like such a weird time period. Mm-hmm. And everybody's just bad as hell. I hate to be a middle school teacher. I know we was cutting up. Mm-hmm. Hey, we had some crying in the class. Bro. All that, man. We made about like five teachers cry and one quit. Mm-hmm. That's how bad we were. Like since, I, I feel like teachers, man, they, they they should get paid more for sure they really should bro they deal with a lot yeah. especially like for me you knowing see i was always a kid like i dealt my foot in being bad mm-hmm. so i always like be funny and ignorant and stuff like that but when it was like i'm finna contact your parent i'm a <laughs> i'm an angel <laughs> hey i'm an angel fool i'm up in that sitting sitting with leg crossed hands on my desk like raising my hand like being real extra getting all the answers right just so she could forget the call <laughs> sometimes i just slipped up man you know saying but i've always been the kid like i just dealt my foot in like i done got kicked out of class and stuff like that but luckily it never got back to the folks because if it did man i just heard you a whiz though man what kind of gpa you finished with oh 4.0 premium i don't know cheating (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> you just gotta know how to play your cards right in high school man like i was smart don't get me wrong i knew all the material and the information but really like when school got remote 
and like we couldn't go to school because of COVID. Man, Quizly everything, bro. <laughs> like I don't even think I learned anything for the remainder of my junior year, and most definitely not my senior year. Dang, you did do your junior and senior year in COVID. Yeah, so I ain't had no prom. <sighs> We barely had the games. Like, I was gonna come hard my senior year. I was staying with my dad. I was like, I had my, me a little car. I was gonna come hard, but man, they fucked everything up. Dang, so you really didn't get to experience high school like that. Not, not like that. Cause Dang. I was usually the type to always go, go to school, go, go home. Yeah. And or go to work type of person. So I ain't never went to the game. I mean, I had a few things, but sometimes I really ain't asked to go nowhere because I always feel like I ain't had no ride. Mm. Like, it would always literally be a hassle to find a ride to go to places. Really? None of my homies had cars like that until, like, at, like during COVID. That's when everybody got their car. Like, their junior year, mm. everybody started getting their cars. But it's like, none of my homies got had a car. And then it was like, when I had to ask my mom, you know what I'm saying, or something like that, like, uh, 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 I gotta do this. I don't think I'm. Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> and then just be like, man, just forget it, bro. I'm just be at the house. And I, I'm glad that I did that because I was able to be more creative. Because mm -hmm. I'm sure if I would dip in like what the average teenager was dipping in, and all the females and stuff like that, I wouldn't have had nothing to accomplish. It would have been fun, but like that type of fun right there. You can't look back and be proud of yourself at it. It ain't, it ain't, it ain't benefit you at all. You just was there. Just was it weird, like energy. seeing like people like you grew up with, just like all going different routes, like some going to jail, just. Oh, it was super weird, bro. Yeah. Because it'd be like, nigga, I knew you since fifth grade. You used to like the Beyblades and and the Pokemon cards. Mm -hmm. Now you a full out thug with your little pistol on your hip, cuz. You know what I'm saying? Like, it was just like. Oh, the, I already know that's the honey's caller. You gotta go to no nah, man. You gotta go ahead and hang my, that up, my boy. Got to hang that up. Just like, yeah, man. Well, um, yeah, like I forgot what I was saying. Let's talk about man, just how you know high school. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, niggas used to be like soft as hell. Now they got straps and shit. Like they super gangster now. Yeah. And they be like, nigga, sit down. Like, we used to talk about regular show and Adventure Time episodes. What do you think hits that switch for them? Like, I don't know. I think they just... Sometimes you feel like they, they do that stuff because they think they're going to get some hoes or something like that. Or they think, like, it's, it's just the image thing, but that's not the type of image I would want to have. Mm -hmm. Like, me, I've just always been that cool, funny dude. Like, that's why I've always been cool with a female. Like... Um, you don't get me wrong, in high school, middle school, I never dated any of them. You know what I'm saying? It was hard on that spark. You know what I'm saying? But, like, just being cool with them, like, just always just having, like, a vast majority of my friends are females, that was, like, my parte. Mm -hmm. And sometimes, like, I'll be able to um, not get lucky here and there, you know? Be chilling with a chick for a while, we get serious, you know what I'm saying, real acquainted. But it's just like, I always had homegirls, like a lot of them. Mm -hmm. And, cause I was just always myself. I wasn't trying to never act super hard or super tough, you know what I'm saying? And if I felt like I was doing that, I would check myself. Mm -hmm. Cause a lot of people, they really don't even be like that. It's just be like, they want to portray this image. But it's like, everybody that's portraying that image is dying. Mm -hmm. So. You know what I'm saying? And I mean, like, even if it's about some hoes, like, I completely be myself. I don't, I get plenty of females. Mm. I have no problem with not none one of them. <laughs> so it's just like, you being all hard, I mean, yeah, that's cool, but you can literally like listening to jazz and fully enjoy that mm. and still be able to get you, you know what I'm saying, whatever you want. Mm. So it's just like super weird, like, these people be really cool, really talented, and they just fall in the small town mind. Say, oh, we just gonna get high, da da da, get somebody pregnant. Now nah, you got ties there forever. You gotta get you a job there so you can take care of your family. Now you live in the work, but mm. no, no, like that's why I had to get get up out of there, mm. cause it's literally nothing there, like nothing to offer there. It, and then you can turn into one of those rappers that you know what I was saying got a little buzz in their city, but you know, like. 40, 50 years old, still doing the same shit. So that's why I just had to elevate everything. Like even just start fresh. Mm -hmm. This was my fresh start. 
Mm. And then as I did that, I'm kind of looked at as the OG of some sort. Everybody looking at me like, yo, man, I want to come out there. I don't because they see what I'm doing mm. at 18. And they like, oh, he got to be doing something right. I ain't doing nothing here. I'm just at my mama's house uh, eating and shit. <laughs> 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 like, I ain't, I ain't got nothing going on. So he obviously doing something right. So that just be the main thing. Like, I just be like, I don't know. Just I be being myself. And like, if you got a problem with being yourself, you're not good. Like a lot of them dudes be really insecure because they don't want to show their true color. Mm -hmm. They're like, cuz, you know you don't, you know you really don't even like perks, bro. <laughs> it hurts your side. It hurts your side real bad, but you trying to fit in and pop in 30 perks at one time. You know you don't like that shit. You go home and throw up. Yeah. And so it's like, be yourself. Like, you know what I'm saying? If you want to, be a, a I don't know if you want to be a table be that just be yourself <laughs> you know what I'm saying like that's yeah. all you got to do yeah. I just hate when people are not authentic yeah. cause you can tell like cuz you trying too hard put your pistol down <laughs> like you said something like you was like nigga we had Chuck E. Cheese what you so hostile for like damn the ops at Chuck E. Cheese ain't no ops here bro like what you got beef with a damn mouse rat <laughs> Damn, like, they be tripping, bro. Yeah. But it, it what, is what it is. What do you got planned in the future, man? Like, what projects are you coming up with? Uh, Truthfully, bro, I ain't even gonna lie to you. I'm all over the place right now because I'm trying to get my life established. Then also trying to get the music on top of that. So it's like, right now I've just been making stuff. Like, just making, 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 making. That's usually how the process goes. Mm -hmm. I just make something. And then it'd be like, oh man, I got a project. So I'm working on the EP. I've been working on it for a while because I'm kind of real hesitant on just, because I be wanting to have like, keep people on their seat. Like if I drop 20 songs, I want you to be able to listen to the whole 20 songs. No problem, that's straight dope. You like every last one of them. Or even if it's six songs, like you listen to the whole thing. like. Like, I was working with this project with my boy, Switchy. He be making, he, man, he go crazy. Him and Adam, my homeboy, Al, Adam, they just dropped the album. Um, man, they super dope. Like, them my partners. And, like, Switchy usually, he really be inspiring me. But I always tell him that he a better producer than me. Mm -hmm. Like, he that hard. Mm -hmm. So we working on a project um, and stuff like that. Putting it together. So, really, he just- Switch, is that over. your homie with the dreads? Yeah. Uh, you like Slim? Uh, he got black dress. I think I know you talking about the one that's got the blonde dress like me. That's yeah. my cousin. That's why okay. they He be rapping. Okay. But um, like my boy Switch, he produce. He be really be low key. He really don't be on social media like that. I be telling him that he need to get on there. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But he really don't. But um, we working on the project because I did a song with him and Adam. And like, I was like, really like how we work together. You know, I'd rather just be like in person type of thing. That's why it's kind of postponed. Mm -hmm. Cause I done wrote for it. I wrote everything for all the beats that he sent. But it's just like, um, I really don't want to record it yet because it's like, I want that in person vibe. Mm -hmm. Cause maybe we may end up doing something else. Like they really inspired me. So um, I'm really just working on myself, perfecting my sound and identifying with the sound that's connects with me and also just trying to make connections mm -hmm. so it's gonna be a few projects for sure more videos more content from me but just right now it's like not a promo plan or nothing it's like planned out it's just really just vibing with the creative vibes and whatever happened you drop it mm -hmm. super authentic you know because yeah. i'll be really be wanting to do some different shit. I really don't be wanting to rap for real, for real. What? Yeah, man, I'm trying to be like an R&B singer or something. <laughs> but I can't sing, though. So that's why I just be trying to find, like, you know what I'm saying, different vibes to hop on a microphone, but they be playing. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, especially chicks, bro, they, they be like. You gotta go to church? 
Yeah, I could probably you gotta go to the churches because they be really knowing how to sing. But with the chiefs, they be acting like they all nervous to sing in front of you and stuff. <laughs> you be like, bro, you just I'm, you just singing four words. Like, uh, you gotta no. be like Terrence Howard. Push it out, man. Push it out, man. <laughs> he growled him. <laughs> hey, he growled him. Hey, man, that movie's stupid. That's like one of my favorite movies. Everybody's so sweaty and musty in a bit. Like, <laughs> it's such a musty looking movie. They turn off the AC because of the background noise. Yeah. That's a major part in the studio. You exactly. know what I mean? Like, so, where do you, you know, you see yourself five years from now, 10 years from now? That's a good question, and I've always been able to answer it. Like, I've literally always been able to answer it. Mm. But the last time I answered it was 10 years ago, at eight. Damn. So it's kind of like, that was a whole different mindset then. The five years ago, I answered that at 13. So it's kind of like my whole, each time, like what I was thinking I was gonna be doing at nine and 13. 13 is closest to what I would want to do. It, it hasn't happened. Cause life just be throwing you for a loop and you be expecting one thing and then it just be like, hmm. But what I would prefer me to be in the next five to 10 years is to my goal, my ultimate goal is by then, I already have a, a big buzz to where I'm getting paid off doing what I love, mm -hmm. music. Like I'm able to, like I don't even have to be the most popular album, but I have my fan base, yeah. I'm able to perform, and I'm able to do that. That's where I see, I don't, I want, I would love to be a big major artist like all oh, everywhere, but I would love to be low key like currency, you know what I'm saying? Draw my albums, my fans support it. Mm -hmm. Still be able to feed my family because they gonna buy the tickets to the show. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like that low key thing, you know what I'm saying? So I don't know. Just getting paid with doing what for sure getting paid doing what I love. Mm -hmm. That's what I see. And that's so such broad because I can be the biggest star or I can just, you know what I'm saying, stay underground. But really whatever option that is or however it goes. I'm going to be getting paid for doing what I love. Mm -hmm. Whether that's film, maybe the music man I work out, maybe whether that's film, whether that's fashion, whether that's anything, I'm not going to be working for these little funky behind companies. I'm going to be <laughs> working for myself and getting to my own bag, doing what I prefer. You know? mm -hmm. It's better to have something that's yours, you know? Exactly. Nobody can really like take that from you. You right, know, cause you you know you started your brand. You know, tell the people about your brand and then where they can find you. Uh, I am I am Janad on Instagram. That's where I mostly be. I am dot J V N A I D. Uh, you probably gonna get me on there a lot, like going live, even though I can't go live right now. But um, <laughs> they cut it off. Man, they cut my live off, bro. I hey, why is, why is Instagram so janky now? Man, bro? Instagram be tripping. I'm like, <sighs> Instagram be tripping. Now I see yeah. post about it every after all, all the time. We, we talked about that earlier. How do you feel about like that meta, whatever they're trying to like the merge metaverse? your Facebook and Instagram? Like, how do you know I got a Facebook? Exactly. And you talking about like the metaverse and stuff like that? Yeah. I don't know. I typically don't. I'm Not the, the metaverse. Oh, you know, the the company oh, that the company merges uh, your uh, Instagram and Facebook. Yeah. Uh, I don't know, man. It's all money, for real, for real. Yeah. Like they they just trying to get paid, but it is kind of weird because, uh, like, ever since really like all that stuff started happening, like you just be randomly like you'll think about something, be like, um, man, I I think I want some chicken. You see a wing stop ad on your Facebook while you're strolling down. You're like, what the hell? Yeah. Or something like that. So I just feel like, I don't know what it is, but we too attached to this, bro. Like, this is literally our whole life. Like, yeah. nobody is private anymore. So it's just like, it's super weird, bro. And I feel like later in life, it's going to bite the vast majority of people in the butt because you never know what these people will do with your information because they got it. You put it on there, even though they have like all these secret, like you can delete stuff or nothing is ever deleted because if you in a case or something like that, police can find old pictures that you deleted with your guns. They can find all that, like it's there forever. Mm -hmm. So they could be selling your information. 
anything. I was stay getting random phone calls. Mm -hmm. I just stopped answering stuff that I don't see. It could probably be an opportunity, but <laughs> man, spam that, likely. Yeah, like all that. So I don't know. It's weird, and it just be making me just want to go back. I feel like I was born in the wrong era. Yeah. I feel like if I was a teenager in the '90s, it would be dope. Like. Go back, go be waiting in line to buy an album instead of it just instantly popping up on your phone or buying physicals, having a cassette, getting mad that somebody scratched your CD. Like, that's what I want to experience. Digging in the crates, like for real, like, and that's the only thing I could do. You know, everything be word of mouth. Oh, she having this party. Oh, are well, right, we finna turn up? We finna go here, don't nobody know nothing like no cameras. you can you can take a l you can get your ass whooped in a fight and nobody know like live to talk about it yeah like that'll be like and nobody would, would record it you can't record it you exactly. know it's like but i feel like if we went a 24 hours where all this shit was shut down people wouldn't be able to survive I know I, I would, but at the same time I wouldn't because I listen to music a lot. So my Apple my Apple music be getting used. So I just I stay with my AirPods in and it just be like without that. I don't know who I would be. I'm like man, I'm gonna be just I'm gonna be like them homeless folks just making noises and shit, beatboxing down the street. <laughs> Like just walk in and shit And they be like What the fuck on this? Dancing with the sign Yeah exactly But mm -hmm. Yeah like But I'm on all streaming platforms Janai JVN AID uh, Anything that you listen to Um Yeah I mostly be on Instagram On YouTube Janai Got a few music videos They doing cool numbers You know what I'm saying Um Really since I ain't I gonna let you here. be humble, man. You was in the thousands, and you know, yeah, you actually, gonna... you put the videos. You really had like a major input on your videos too. Yeah, you because know? that's that's what people want to see, mm -hmm. and that's how I see it. And it's kind of like be like when I be working with people, I be scared because it's like, you know, they got their their mindset, and then you got your idea. Mm -hmm. So however they operate is most likely gonna be over your idea. Yeah, their you know idea. Yeah. So it just be like that's why I always just wanted to do it myself. Mm -hmm. but at the same time, I was trying to build a team, and sometimes that's even hard too. Yes. Cause I tried, yeah. but you know, this things just life. And know? everybody thinks differently, and yeah, everybody, everybody has their own different. time with things. Everybody thinks different. Yeah. And it really starts getting weird when money start getting involved, <laughs> especially like. When your parents be in your ear, like, um, you should be like, man, you need to start charging these people for their beats. Like, you can't be giving out your stuff. Well, I never listen because it's like, I don't care about that. But it'd yeah. be other producers, like, that y'all, we don't, like, let's big each other up. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I don't have no problem with paying. But let's big each other up. Like, if we're going to work on a collaboratory project, you know what I'm saying? Like, let's both just lock in. I got to make but sure you But you see, are. like, because it just be creative like that. But when you looking for the bag and it's a price on it, you really not gonna care as another person. You know what I'm saying? You just trying to get the product out so you can get your money and leave. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, I just I just oh, shit, I don't know. I kind of forgot what I'm saying. <laughs> oh, you just gotta you know do your own thing. Bro. Exactly. Yeah. Because like, if um, you don't focus on your on your on your path, you know, and you're always looking on the you know the right mirror. You know what I mean? How are you gonna make it to your destination? You exactly. staying on course, that's the smart thing. You know? Right. Well, it do be a few distractions here and there, you know what I'm saying? But yeah. you always gotta make sure you shake back. Yeah, you shake back every time, man. Before yeah. we get out of here, man, you want any shout outs? Uh, I just wanna give a shout out to the <laughs> I wanna give a shout out to everybody, like, that contribute to it. Like, I really did my shout outs like in the midst of me talking. Yeah. But like just everybody who named I said, um I wanna give a shout out to all the people that helped contribute to build the person that I am today. Like like just like y'all listens, lectures, all that stuff. Even though it was annoying at one point and it was like leave me alone. But now I can see what y'all saying and it really helped build me into the person that I am today. So like my mom, my dad Lawrence, uh, my sister, Messiah, Treasure, Taylor, Bella, Akeem, <laughs> April, Kaylee, like, 
Fucking Anthony, Antoine, Switch, me, 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 and everybody else who name I didn't call that helped make construct the goat. You know what I'm saying? Like they help with the process, help with the inspiration, help with the mindset, help with all that. You know what I'm saying? Like all y'all, like that's my shout out. Like appreciate it, you know, because I wouldn't be me without y'all. So. Yeah, for sure. Even all right, though man. sometimes, you know what I'm saying, you have your ups and downs, <laughs> it's, it's all lessons, bro, at the end of the day. So with everybody, you know, you, with everybody, you know what I'm saying, even if even the people that was bad in my life that came in, and I want to give a shout out to y'all because y'all taught me to recognize the flags, you know. <laughs> like I, this, Everybody that I interacted with that contributed to who I am at this moment in time, shout out to y'all. All right, man. Janae, it's been real, my boy. For sure, for sure.